My D&D campaign crashed and burned because of Game Master burnout. And if you're a Game Master watching this, you've probably experienced the same thing. I polled my Twitter followers, and out of over 19,000 GMs, a mind-blowing 70% have ended campaigns over burnout. But it doesn't have to be this way. There are things we can do to prevent burnout before it happens, recognize it when it does, and get past it so we can get back to gaming. Today, I'm gonna show you how by sharing my burnout story. The first thing that happened was that I started to feel this sense of dread before sessions. At first it was just like an hour or so before we met up, but as time went on, sometimes I would feel that dread for days before the game. It was like this rock in the bottom of my stomach. God, I should be working on game prep right now, but I just can't get myself to start. Plus, I know it's gonna be like pulling teeth to get anything done. Why does every single part of the creative process feel impossible now? We have a session tomorrow and I'm dreading it. This game used to be fun, but lately I just feel exhausted when we play, like the session can't end soon enough. And then afterwards I just beat myself up about every single thing. Wait a second, is this spaghetti sauce? When did we have spaghetti? The word burnout originated in the 70s from a psychologist who had the ultimate psychologist name, Herbert Freudenberger. It's incredible. It's like somebody wanted to invent a fake psychologist name and had only ever heard of Freud. The term was originally used in reference to professions like doctors and nurses who do a lot of self-sacrifice in order to help others. But nowadays, we talk about burnout in all kinds of contexts. Work, relationships, caregiving. Now, I'm not saying game masters are on par with doctors or anything, but the role of GM is demanding, and it is sacrificial. Unlike players, we have a number of complex jobs to do during gameplay, and after the game ends, we have homework. And it's not just the actual game mastering either. Often roles like hosting, scheduling, and even moderating interpersonal conflicts fall on the GM's shoulders. It's no wonder we're so prone to burnout. So let's talk about three ways to stop burnout before it stops your game. This probably won't surprise you to hear, but I have created a very busy life for myself. I just like doing stuff, and I'm also really bad at estimating how long things take, so most of the time I'm behind schedule and stressed out. It's just my natural state. When I was playing in a game, this was fine. I just blocked off Sunday afternoons and said, that's game day. But GMing required a lot more labor, and that labor required time that I just didn't have. But here's the thing, I didn't have to be doing all that labor. For some reason, I had decided to do everything myself. My my own world, my own plot, every encounter and location and NPC created from scratch. And I thought the only solution to this encroaching burnout was to somehow find more time to do all that work, which is impossible. But there was a second obvious solution that I just couldn't see, which is do less work. If you're also getting burnt out by the labor of game mastering, start by identifying which parts not only take the most time, but are the least fun for you. There is an absolute dragon's horde of supplementary content for tabletop games out there, so you don't have to create anything that you don't want to. Hate drawing maps? Buy a pack of PDFs on Etsy, download free maps online, pledge to a cartographer's Patreon, or use one of the many, many websites that randomly generate game maps. Struggling to balance encounters? Steal them from pre-made modules or campaigns. You can always reflavor them to suit whatever's going on in your game. Stressed out at the idea of inventing an entire fleshed out world? There are so, so many campaign setting books, and I guarantee that whatever tone or aesthetic appeals to you, you can find one that's pretty darn close. Also, check in on the scale of your game. It's possible that it started out as a game you could handle and has spiraled into a game that you can't handle. If your campaign started off as let's fight some goblins and has now become let's kill God, it's okay to reevaluate the scale and move back into territory that feels manageable. Personally, I'm an over-preparer. I feel most comfortable running a game when I have a really firm grasp of everything that's going on. But in retrospect, I think I could have done enough prep to feel comfortable if I had just focused on the stuff that I was excited about and been more willing to fill in the gaps with stuff that I didn't create myself. I don't enjoy large-scale world building, so no wonder it was exhausting to force myself to do it every week. If I had instead gotten to focus on characters and flavor, the stuff I really enjoy, I could have spent less time prepping and had more fun doing it. And I think my game would have lasted longer. Roll a dexterity save. Seven. No. You are unable to dodge Miss Harriet Highbrow's strategically spilled tea. Oh. It splashes onto your brand new spotted muslin gown, staining it. I give Harriet a judgmental look and say, Oh, Miss Highbrow, are you quite all right? 
All that strife at home must have weakened your nerves terribly. <gasps> you say that? Okay, we're gonna need a stiff drink first. Many Worlds Tavern is an online coffee and tea company, creating roasts and blends designed to transport your players into the worlds of your games. I love their Great Old One Dark Roast Coffee to keep me going during those late night sessions. And now, they're offering tea, too. My favorite is the Morning Mists Black Tea. They even donate $1 from the sale of each bag to support gaming-related nonprofits. The first 300 people to use the code GINNY10 at checkout get 10% off their order. Okay, contested charisma. 21. Her eye twitches. Lord Rupert Pumpernickel raises his left eyebrow. You've struck quite a blow. And just in time for the Fopworthy's Country Ball. Visit Many Worlds Tavern to get some tea for your tabletop, no matter what kind of game you're playing. Check out the description for the link. Of course, sometimes fighting burnout isn't as simple as downloading some maps or picking out a module. Maybe game prep that used to be enjoyable for you just doesn't feel fun anymore. Or maybe you're feeling burnt out because of stuff outside the game. A difficult time at work, demands from your family, personal stuff making things harder. That's when this second step becomes extra important. Be honest with your players. I gotta tell you, I was terrified to tell my players how I felt. I was worried that they'd be disappointed, that they wouldn't understand, even that they would think I was a bad game master. I felt like I was letting them down, like I was admitting that I couldn't deliver on the promises that we had built the entire campaign on. But when I finally opened up about how I was feeling, they were so understanding and supportive. And to be honest, I think they could probably already tell something was wrong. The energy of a game session comes from everybody at the table, and the energy I was putting Putting into that mixture was definitely a downer. Unfortunately, I shared those feelings with my party too late. If I'd been honest with them earlier, I would have felt more comfortable making changes to the setting or the schedule, and they might have even been able to help. But since I waited until I was like a burnt out husk of a game master before I opened up, all it really did was foreshadow the end of the campaign. If I could do it over again, I'd be more honest with my players about how I was feeling. I mean, we all want the same thing, a fun game that we can keep playing all the way to its conclusion. Your players can't support you if you don't tell them that you need support. They can shoulder certain responsibilities to take weight off of you, like handling scheduling, helping you set up or tear down, doing session recaps. They can make prep easier by communicating clearly to you where they plan on going and what they plan on doing next session. They might even be willing to put on the GM hat for a while and give you a break, whether that means running sessions in your main campaign or just GMing a few one-shots to give you a break. Even if you don't want to ask players for help, making sure they know what's going on ensures that they have context if you need to postpone own a session or press pause on the campaign for a while. I also want to say a big part of my personal burnout experience was feeling like my players weren't having a good time. I took everything personally every time one of them checked their phone or was unusually quiet or had to leave early. And the more burnt out I got, the less confident I felt in myself as a game master. And to be clear, that's totally on me. It is not my player's job to manage my insecurities. But I will say that if you're a player watching this and you don't want to lose your GM to burnout, your words of support support are way more powerful than you know. Unfortunately, sometimes making adjustments, finding resources and tools, and asking for the support and understanding of our friends still isn't enough. Sometimes burnout just gets you anyway. And in those cases, there's really only one thing to do. Ignore it and push through. Wait. No, sorry, it's actually the exact opposite of that. When I first noticed signs of burnout, my gut reaction was to push through. I thought if I just tried harder, I could save the campaign and nothing would have to change. I was struggling to find time to prep. Okay, I would just stay up later. I'd prep during lunch. I would just get faster through sheer force of will. Anything to not have to admit that I couldn't do it. You can probably guess what happened. Trying to push through only made it worse. I couldn't expect it to just go away when the conditions that caused it were still in place. In fact, the more I tried to just grit my teeth and ignore it, the worse it got. I went from feeling like I needed a break to feeling like I just wanted out completely. Once you're all the way in burnout land, there's really only one thing left to do. Take a break. The only thing that everyone agrees on when it comes to burnout is that rest Rest is the cure. The longer you keep pushing yourself, the more rest it takes to heal. So not only did my approach not help me, it probably made the recovery phase take even longer. Taking a break can mean different things for different people, but here are some options. Play shorter sessions. Play fewer sessions. Let somebody else GM for a while. Replace a few sessions with board game nights or just social hangouts. You don't have to stop spending time with your group in order to recharge. Be willing to cancel if you're not feeling up for a session. 
Take an extended break of a few weeks or even a few months to give yourself space to recharge. Play a different game for a while if you just need to let your campaign breathe a bit. Stepping away from a campaign can be really difficult. For many of us, these games are extremely personal and important to us. Not to mention that they make it really easy to see your friends regularly, something that gets increasingly difficult in adulthood. What I'm saying is, I know taking a break can be hard. But as they say in the manufacturing industry, if you don't schedule time for maintenance, your equipment will schedule it for you. The same is true of the game master equipment that lives in your brain. If you don't take care of it, you'll burn out and it'll just stop working and then you'll have no choice. It's better to rest now so that you can game another day. When I asked about Game Master Burnout on Twitter, some dingus retweeted my poll to say that anybody who gets burnt out over a game is taking it too seriously. And first of all, that guy sucks. I hope his cat barfs in his shoe. But on some level, a much kinder and more empathetic level than the one he's clearly living on, I think there's a grain of truth to this. We play games because we enjoy them, because they're fun. And burnout isn't fun. So if you hit that point, something's got to change. There is nothing wrong with you if you experience burnout from being a game master. It doesn't mean you don't love the game or your friends. It doesn't mean you don't care or you're a bad GM. It doesn't even mean you're a weirdo. Statistically, it seems like people who haven't burnt out on GMing are the weirdos. But burnout can end your game and nobody wants that. So try to stay tuned in to what you're feeling so your story doesn't get cut short. Man, that game was a big learning experience for me. If you want another story time all about my game master mistakes, check out this video next. It's all about the lessons I wish I'd learned earlier. And it has time travel, so that's fun.